Hello and welcome to PMZLounge.com. Today we are talking about quality, specifically quality in the world of project management. If you have not heard about quality, if you don't know anything about quality, this should be your first video. So stay tuned, very, very important video and do refer to it every time you forget what quality was when it came to project management. Now all of us have some idea when it comes to quality because we use the term quality in our day to day conversations. So you already know something about quality. You already have your own definition about quality. But when it comes to project management, the word, the word quality has a slightly different meaning. In fact, here's a definition of quality when it comes to project management the degree to which a product meets its requirements now this is the same definition that we have covered recently in one of our videos when we introduced the quality management knowledge area i'll link to it in the description below in fact the first link in the description is going to take you to a related article on quality so if you are into reading check out the first link in the description and the second link in the description will be the entire playlist on all the videos that we have done on quality management knowledge area. So don't forget to check those two links out. Let's move on. So what do you do now? You know that there is some difference between the quality, the word quality that you know and the word quality when it comes to project management. So what do you do in project management when it comes to quality? The first thing is as a project manager, you need to set quality goals and not just that you need to measure progress along the way. You need to measure where you stand in terms of these goals. Are you able to meet these goals or not? So as a project manager, that is your job when it comes to quality. Now, in order to do that, in order to first set goals and secondly, to measure the progress that you're meeting those goals in order to do that, you need to understand the quality levels. This is important. The quality levels your stakeholders believe are acceptable and your project meets them. So very important. There are stakeholders. Everyone will have certain, uh, you know, expectations of quality when it comes to quality. Everyone will have certain expectations and you need to know what those expectations are. What are the required quality levels your project should meet? And these are expected and acceptable to your stakeholders. So you need to make sure that your project meets those levels. Now to think of it, this is similar to schedule and cost goals. You may have schedule goals. You may want to finish the project in eight months. That's a schedule goal. You may have cost goals. You want to finish the project within 250,000 US dollars. Similarly, there will be quality level goals as well. There will be quality goals where you want to achieve a certain level of quality. Six Sigma is actually a level of quality. Similarly, your project should also have quality goals and they need to be defined and you as a project manager need to measure progress along the way as you move forward in your project. Before we move ahead, let me remind you if you're looking for PMP book recommendations to prepare for your PMP exam, head over to pmclounge.com slash resources. We have listed our favorite books there. A very important point to note here, quality is not testing. These two are not synonymous terms. And in many organizations, you can see that the testing department is known as quality department. This cannot be further from truth. The fact is quality goes way beyond the simple testing. So in order to understand quality of the product, you need to do much more than just test it. Let's take an example. Suppose you have a time machine and you tra travel to 1980s and you take with yourself a defective iPad. This iPad, the only operation that this iPad can do is open the camera app and take photos. Now, if you show this iPad to someone in the 1980s who's who's in living in that era of 1980s, right? And they look at an iPad and they see, okay, this looks like a very fancy camera. It's just a camera because only the camera app is working. Now they may think that this product is a really good product. It is a camera and it is uh, very sleek as compared to other cameras in the market. It has a screen, which is quite big. So they may think that this is a great product. If they test it, 
they may feel that this is a great product but if you tell them what all an ipad can do what all applications an ipad can have installed and what all operations an ipad is supposed to do maybe then they'll understand that this product the ipad that they have the defective one which only has a camera app then they may feel that this is not high quality because this is not able to perform its functionalities its operations it is only doing just one thing which is opening the camera app and taking pictures but the ipad is capable of doing much more so this is the reason why if you are only testing a product without knowing what all it can do you may not touch upon the quality of that product and you know you define what all the product is supposed to do in the requirements document what all is an ipad supposed to do will be in the requirement specification document of the ipad so once you give that document to the person in, from the 1980s they'll say this defective ipad is a very low quality product because all it does is take pictures in fact the ipad is supposed to do so many other things this is why how well the product conforms to those requirements is essentially how high quality the product is this is very important we talked about the requirements document and how well your product your ipad how well does it confirm to the requirements in the requirement document is essentially how high quality the product is so once the requirements document is handed over to that person from the 1980s they'll tell you that this defective ipad is a very low quality product or it is a defective product because it cannot uh, perform all the operations written in its requirements document if it was able to perform all those operations it was if it was able to do all the functions written in the requirements document then of course that would have been a high quality product now there are three very important concepts of quality specifically from the perspective of the pmp exam so do hang around till the end and understand these concepts as they are going to be helpful in answering some of the quality questions that you are going to come across in your exam first is customer satisfaction this is all about ensuring that the end customer the person who's paying the money is happy with the product so how do you do that requirements the product requirements right your system requirements the sr document or whatever you want to call it the business requirements whenever a requirement is written for a project they are written with the customer satisfaction in mind nobody wants to create a product without thinking about the customer without thinking whether it is going to satisfy the customer or not so that is why requirements whenever they are written they are written with customer satisfaction in mind and this entire point is about customer satisfaction of course now then there are unstated requirements as well so not everything under the sun can be jotted down there are requirements which you should think of as common sense you know let's talk about galaxy note there was a mobile phone i'm not sure which version it was i think it was galaxy note 8 that mobile phone started blowing up so phone should not blast was definitely an unstated requirement you know like i mentioned in the previous point not everything under the sun can be jotted down so nobody wrote phone should not blast in the requirements document for this product galaxy note but this was definitely an unstated requirement that should have been followed because of common sense so customer satisfaction is again extremely important every stated requirement is written with customer satisfaction in mind and unstated requirements should be thought upon with customer satisfaction in mind so this is a very important point when it comes to quality second is fitness for use now this was uh, this term was coined by joseph juran this idea his entire idea was introduced by joseph juran and this is a good pointer to take note of as far as the pmp exam is concerned you never know you may have this question uh, that asks who introduced the concept of fitness for use in quality the answer is joseph juran now fitness for for use is all about ensuring 
that the design of the product fits the customer needs what do we mean by that let's say feature phones they still have better market share in rural areas as compared to smartphones why because the battery life of the feature phones are much better than smartphones and rural areas may face extended amount extended periods of time when there's electricity cut there's no power and in that scenario feature phones work better for the rural uh, area people residing in the rural areas as compared to smartphones so this is fitness for use and this is something this is a concept of quality that you should definitely look forward to customers and this is uh, the conclusion customers will always choose the product that fits their needs even if its functionalities are limited we just talked about how feature phones have better market share as compared to smartphones in rural areas because their you know this product fits their needs even the functionalities even if the functionalities of a feature phone are limited as compared to smartphones but feature phones still have a better market share number three is conformance to requirements now this idea was popularized by philip crosby again an important point to note as far as pmp exam is concerned concerned now end of the day the product needs to do what is returned in the requirement specification we've already talked about it but these requirements when we said that they are written ensuring customer satisfaction in mind they should also take into account what will satisfy the customer the customer satisfaction as well as the best design possible for the job right here's an example one plus phones they are designed by taking inputs from the community of users there is a one plus community of end users they are the ones who use the one plus phone and they give feedback to the company and the company develops a phone based on customer satisfaction the customer requirements and the best design possible for the customers right so this is an example of uh, conformance to requirements again philip crosby was the person who popularized this idea important point to note so that is all that we had in this video hope it was helpful hope you were able to understand what quality is all about do give a like if you did so and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay notified whenever we upload new content as always don't forget to check out the website pmclounge.com your number one free pmp resource with hundreds of helpful articles and videos thank you